In this video, I want to show you how to use a MySQL cloud database and how to use the MySQL connector module in Python to access a database. So there's a whole set of cloud database providers, providers out there, you know, Google Cloud, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, there's all kinds of cloud providers out there. Because this video is intended for students in my class, I like to use services that don't necessarily require a credit card. So there is one I found that lets you set up like a basic MySQL database without really having to enter any credit card data. So you can just kind of play around with stuff and, and learn. If you go to clever-cloud.com and sign up for an account here, they'll give you access to the ability to create MySQL databases amongst other things. And we can just sign up here in the top right and then just give an email address, password, password, agree with the conditions. And then they'll send you the usual email that you have to verify. So I'll activate our account. And then I'll just give, you know, some information here. Maybe I'll give a fake phone number though. and just, just sign up for it, just save this. Okay, so once you're in here, like a lot of cloud providers, they let you create different uh, resources. So it could be some kind of compute resource to host an application, or it could be storage resources or whatever. And in the case of a MySQL database, they call that an add-on in their kind of vocabulary for what these different kind of compute resources are. So if you go to an add-on and then you go to MySQL and pick select and then just go to dev, you know, it's not a lot, but they give you 10 megabytes to play around with for free. And so if you're just kind of learning and just trying to getting started with some application, it's kind of a cool option. Um, so just go there and then say next, uh, give it a name. I'll just say like test DB Montreal, Canada makes sense. And then on their end, they're kind of creating this resource. They're creating a database. And then that's kind of it. You've, you've basically now got a MySQL database that you can connect to. And they give you a host here. That's kind of like where it's located on the web that you can use as a host to connect to it. The database name there, a username here, and then a password here. And so what we can do is now use uh, Python to connect to this database. So to do that, we're going to use the MySQL connector module. And I've already installed it, so I can't really show you that part. But basically, it's another one of those things where you can use pip to install it. And you know, W3Schools has some reasonable instructions on how to do that. So to get going with it, though, we're going to say import MySQL connector. And I'm just going to save this file as like, I don't know, testdb.py. But just import the module and then we just have to make a connection to the database. So the first thing we do is we say my DB is equal to mysql.connector.connect. So this is going to return an object that essentially represents the connection and allows you to do stuff like execute SQL operations to do things like retrieve entries or delete things or whatever. And we can then give our credentials here. So we're just going to say as arguments to this function. So we're going to say host is equal to, we have to give the host name. So I'll grab that. And then I've got to say user is equal to, I'll have to grab that. The database is equal to this here. And then I got, I got to put the password here. Actually, I forgot this part. And I say uh, pass wd is equal to, and I'll give the password here. Okay. And then I'm going to say print my DB. And this will just output something like, hey, I'm a connection to a MySQL database or something like that. It'll be some kind of object. 
Okay. So I'll say Python 3 test db.py. Try to run this. Invalid syntax. Oh, I probably forgot a comma. Forgot a comma. All right. Run again. And you see you've got some object here that is a connection to a database. And then from here, what we can do is we can do things like run queries or that'll retrieve information or delete information or create tables that are going to store the information and so forth. And one of the things with really any kind of database is you want to have some kind of administration tool that'll let you see what's going on inside the database. And for MySQL databases, the, the common tool is phpMyAdmin. So if you go to here, they actually give you access to phpMyAdmin. So you can just click on this and it'll load up in this page here, PHP My Admin, which is a tool for administering a database. So, and it's it's a little slow, it's, but it, it does work. So if you click on this here, that's the, that's our database name there. Like this here is our database name. So if you click on that there, it'll bring up any tables that exist. And what you can actually do is in this tool, in this PHP My Admin tool, you can actually create your tables in here and just say like create a table and give it a name and say go and 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 start putting entries into it and so forth. But what we'll do is we'll actually make a table in the Python uh, program we're writing here. So we'll just make our first SQL operation here. And the way that this module here works is once you've got this object here that represents your that represents your connection, to perform uh, certain operations, you have to get a cursor, they call it. So you just say, you can say like my cursor or whatever you want to call it is equal to my db dot cursor. And then this is going to be the object. It's going to return the object that's actually going to let you execute the commands. So then we can say things like this. I can say like my cursor dot execute and I can say create table customers. And I can operate and I can run this command here and I can just say, okay, uh, run this again here. Oh, so I got an error here. A table must have at least one column. Oh, so I didn't really, yeah, that doesn't make sense. So I just said create table customers, but I forgot to put in the, the part where I say uh, what the uh, columns of the table are going to be. I just said like create table customers. So I'm going to say uh, create table customers and I'm going to say name var car. I'll just say 255 address var car 255. And this should be okay here. Okay. So now if I actually check in this PHP MyAdmin tool here, we should see that a database customers has been created and you see it there, right? So we actually had an effect on the actual, uh, you know, database in the sense that we just made a table. It's not typical to actually create tables in your kind of standard database access code. Typically what you're doing is retrieving data from tables and deleting data and that kind of stuff. But for our example, we'll just kind of create the table within Python. Now, if I try to run this again, actually, I would get a bit of an issue. If I try to run this again, it'll say uh, error table customers already exists. So I'm trying to create a table that already exists. So it actually is going to give me an error. You can drop a table and you can say uh, my cursor that execute and I can say drop table if exists customers. So what this is going to do is basically give me a, a bit of a clean slate here because I'm basically saying, well, if the table customers exists, drop it and then create it. So I'm kind of just starting off with a clean slate. So I'm going to say drop the table and whatever's in it, then create it again. So that way I can just kind of play around with stuff here. So I run that now and now it works. Customers table will still be there. Uh, now what I could do is I could start inserting things in the table. So I could say, let's say I want to insert something. Uh, the way that works is, so we say, I'll just show you. We say SQL is equal to, and I'll give like an SQL statement here that'll insert something. So I'll say insert into customers, name, address, values, percent S, percent S. And this is going to be a, this is a string here that rep represents an SQL statement that I want to run. And then these percent S's here, these are essentially placeholders that are saying there's going to be a value put here. And I'll explain why we do that in a sec. 
And then I say here, val is equal to, and I'll say John, and I'll say highway 21. Okay, and these are going to be my values that are actually going to go in here. So I'm going to be inserting a entry into the customer's table where the name is going to be John, the address is going to be Highway 21. And then I'm going to say my cursor dot execute. And I'm going to say SQL val. Then I'm going to say my DB commit. So what happens here is when we go to execute this SQL statement here, we give the SQL code separately from the values that are going to be put into the placeholders inside that SQL uh, statement string. And the reason why you do that is uh, what's called SQL injection, which is where people put essentially bad code that's going to do bad things as uh, values into your string. And, and that would come up if, say, you had something like form input from a website and somebody put something like, you know, drop table, you know, customers, and they managed to kind of stick that into your SQL statement in such a way that it would actually run. And to prevent that kind of a thing from happening, what you typically see when using MySQL or any database that's based on SQL is a separation of the SQL operation from the values that go in it. And so that's what this is, is we're separating it. We're saying like, okay, this should only be interpreted as SQL. These should only be interpreted as values. And then this will run it in that way. Now, this will actually then commit the change. So if we do this, this should actually insert an entry into the table. So we run that. If we check out the customer's table now, we see that it has this, you know, entry in here where John has the address Highway 21. So that's inserting. And then the other operations would be like update and select to retrieve entries and delete. So I can, we might as well go over those. So I'll just say here, uh, SQL is equal to, and we'll say update customers set address equal to Canyon one, two, three, where address is equal to highway 21. So this will look for this where clause here is going to look for the record that has or records that have the address highway 21. And for any record that has the address highway 21, it's going to change the address to be Canyon 123. And then I can run this statement. So I'll say my cursor dot execute SQL. I don't give a val here because there is no placeholders in my, in my SQL statement here to insert values into. So I just execute it. And then I say my DB dot commit. And then this, if we run this, we should see that it actually updates that, uh, that entry there. And if I refresh this here, we should see that it changes to Canyon one, two, three, and it does. So that's updating. Uh, and then we can do a select. So a select will actually return all the, um, the, or not all, but it'll return some amount of records potentially from the table. So here when I say select star from customers, what this is going to do is it's going to select all the columns of data from customers. And because there's no where clause, like if I put a where on the end of this, because there's no where clause, it's not going to do any filtering. It's just going to grab everything. And I'm just putting it directly as a string into this execute method here as an argument, uh, as opposed to, you know, defining it in a string and, and, and it's just defining it as a separate variable. So there's, there's no reason why I have to do that. I can just put the string right in here and it's going to work fine. So then I'll say my cursor dot, uh, or sorry, my result is equal to my cursor dot fetch all. So we run the statement, right? And this is going to retrieve all of the entries in the customers table. And what my cursor dot fetch all is going to do is it's actually going to give it to, uh, it's actually going to give us the actual list of entries. And then we're going to have my result uh, reference that list. And then I can just loop through that list and just output the entry. So I'll just say 4x in my results, and I'll say print x. 
And so if I run this now, I get, you know, John and Kenyon123. And then the last thing to do is just delete something. So we'll just delete one of these entries and we'll just say, or the one entry. So we'll just say SQL is equal to delete from customers where name is equal to John. And then I'll say my cursor dot execute SQL and my DB dot commit. And we run this and that should delete the entry. And if we check out this table now, we should see name and address are there. So the columns still exist, but there's no entries in there. So it's just a blank table at this point. So really that's just uh, you know, the basics of using this uh, clever cloud MySQL cloud database solution and using the MySQL connector module within Python to run a bunch of operations to delete and create tables and create, read, update, and destroy data. All right, thanks.